All right, y'all. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I've been gone for a long time uh, since my hiking trip. Uh, and that entire time I've been gone, haven't worked on the Falcon other than maybe getting a door handle for it. Haven't done anything with it. Um, was trying to be a good boss at work, be a father and a husband at home and haven't messed with anything. But uh, it is, I believe, Sunday the 20th of August, 2023. And uh, if you don't know, if you don't follow me on social media or anything like that, I'm doing Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0 in the black car. Uh, yeah, I wish it was a Falcon, but we just ain't there financially to get that thing all together. Um, so I'm doing this race with Tony and Tess, stick shift class. Um, this engine's been together for a couple years. I think we're gonna do a camshaft change and we're either gonna try and get it turboed before then. It's like a month and 10 days out. So we're either gonna try and turbo it before then or I'm gonna change the intake manifold to a fuel injected runner intake manifold and then put a um, elbow on it with a plate. And so maybe run a bigger camshaft, a little more nitrous. Um, I do have the Holly EFI we're going to put on it. That way I can rev it farther than 6200. And we're just going to see where we fall. Fastest pass last time I did that was like 1061 or 1062. Um, so it'd be cool to try and get that up. Uh, I know it's not Falcon content, which is what everybody wants to see. But uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Tune in if you want to watch me get the, the, the Mustang ripped apart, put back together, and, and on our way to Rocky Mountain Race with 2.0. Um, we have Hurricane Hillary in effect, full in effect. So uh, the goal was to get up early this morning and, and get cranking, but I got back from Hawaii yesterday and I've got some jet lag going on, number one. And number two, with all the rain, it's really slowed me down this morning. But I'm going to drag my uh, race week trailer out. I need to get the race week trailer out and start getting that thing. It's kind of just set since the last race. So it's gonna need some TLC. Uh, the car trailer is gonna need to go have the bearings checked and make sure it's good to go, you know, halfway across the, the country again. And so all that content's gonna be coming up. Thanks for tuning back in. All right. So this trailer has sat literally behind the shop or by the shop since Tim and I did Rocky Mountain in 2020. So this will be the first time that I open it up. It does have a solar panel on top. I'm gonna go around and kind of show you guys what I did. There is a solar panel on top, but I've got a, uh, like a controller to control the battery and that thing has been turned off. So I don't know if the battery's any good. Uh, we can try, but let's go through this thing real quick right here from what I can tell. I don't think it's gonna need that much um, TLC. The Tire Man, that's my sponsor for all these events, for tires. That's gonna need a new sticker up front. That one's baked. But all these ones in the back, dang, they fared very well. Let me show you. All these stickers, I think, cause the back of this was against my little shed. They all did really well. You can see all the leaves in there. Not sure what happened there. That might've been from when we towed it home. I've got these pads that I put on this trailer. And that's because I flip it up and set it on its back when I'm traveling to and from. That way I can get both the trailer, um, this little trailer and the Mustang on the car trailer. So let's crack this thing open and see, you know, see if it's wet in there. All right, so we'll just start at the back. I got this thing, I think off of Jegs. That's the company, Prairie View Industries. And this is perfect for um, storing like carb cleaner, whatever you want that's in an aerosol can there and you don't want it rolling around. This is a good deal for gapping plugs or freaking having lunch or whatever. We use it kind of for anything. Obviously paper towels here. You always need those. And then more storage. Uh, as far as in here, you guys already seen the um, solar controller. So all that thing does is just takes the energy from that panel and feeds it to the battery via that. It's supposed to not let it overcharge and, and all that, but I apparently left this circuit breaker on. And so, I don't know, maybe the battery just over three years of doing whatever, it took a crap. Maybe I'll throw it on the bench and check and see how many volts it is, I don't know. But uh, I think I may get some more of that thin 
in white metal that I use on the outside here. This stuff, I, I, I think it's like 40 gauge. It already comes um, in the color that you want it. And I may throw it just on the side walls, maybe on the roof, not sure yet. Um, this is what happens when you're pulling stuff in and out. You can start snagging insulation. I was trying to keep some of the heat out of here um, just because you're driving around with nitrous bottles and stuff, or I was. We'll see what, what I end up doing this time. Looks like I got a little bit of leaks over there. It doesn't rain much in California, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, these lights, I think, were Amazons. Just take a rivet in the middle. They're fairly bright. I'd like to get them fired up and show you. Um, I did a video on this thing, but I was very new at YouTube, like I said earlier, and I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, this is where I was throwing all of like my gaskets, anything that was flat. So like gaskets, I had another... Uh, that I didn't really need access to all the time. Um, like I said, I got plenty of vents to let any air out of this thing. All this other stuff, this is all Amazon stuff. So like these trailer lights, Amazon, uh, all the marker lights, Amazon. Um, this is all just RV molding that I used around. Little access door, it's locked. Stickers did really good. Um, this front is a little, I've got two areas here for uh, two five gallons of fuel. So try to keep the fuel outside of the trailer when we were driving, just in case. And in the front, I've got a little storage area. I was keeping like bungee cords, my hose, or my air for my hose compressor, the, the line, the air line, I was keeping that in there. Um, I lowered that down a little bit. This was just, like I said earlier, this was just a Harbor Freight trailer that I modified um, primarily for that right there. I wanted the VIN number and I didn't want to have any issues with California. It's a pain in the butt to do anything here with DMV. But like the fenders, those are all from Amazon. Wheels and tires are from are from a tire man. I've got a full size spare underneath this bad boy in case, you know, Anyhow, I'd probably replace those tires uh, just because they're three years old and I don't want no problems in the middle of nowhere. But as far as the stickers on the back, man, they did really well. Um, they sponsored me last time, or Tony and Tess, kind of uh, representing the small block Ford stuff. My boy Kid Rock, Tire Man. Uh, California, one thing they do kind of cool is they do California permanent trailer registration, so it's permanently registered. Um, little magnet here on the door to keep the door open. It kind of struggles, but I, I made all this stuff. I wish I knew now what I knew then as far as making YouTube videos. It would have been a lot in-depth for you guys. And I made all that stuff. Just kind of got out here drinking beers and and got cranking on it. All right, it is Sunday the 26th, I think. I ain't done nothing with the Drag Week trailer. The battery's no good. Tried to charge it, it won't hold the charge. So I've got to grab a battery for that. But that's at least my worries. So I think I'm gonna make things really hard on myself and turbo the Fox and, uh, you know, roll the race week with never using Holly before, none of that stuff. But the dilemma I have now, sorry I haven't filmed, but the dilemma I have right now is, so typically like your on three stuff, I think moves this over and, and the turbo sits over here, but these engines are already set over in these cars to make room for your steering and all that other junk. And I think I've got a lot of room right here. If I lose that, this thing I welded on for my little box, which that'll have to move, but I'm thinking the turbo would be most appropriately right there. Not even close, but I'm thinking sticking that through that hole, maybe, I don't know, something like that, maybe. But I'm gonna have to pull the inner fender wells out of this thing, move some stuff around and see if that's an even a good place for this turbo. Sorry, my hair's messed up, I was in the pool. Been doing chores all day. Really need to get hunkering down on this car and get it cranking. Still wanna pull the engine out. 
uh, crack the pan off and just go through, make sure everything's good before we head out of here and beat the crap out of this thing. Haven't done race week in three years and it's kind of just, uh, you know, went to get a burger here and there and ain't done much since. All right, you guys, it's Monday night. It is the 28th, we are one month out. So I got a lot of work to do and I hope I can get all this crap paid for before we leave. But today I ordered waste gates, blow off valve, new fuel pump. Uh, we're gonna have to change the fuel lines that come up to the front and the fuel rails and the regulator. But I can order those, I don't have to order those right now. My main focus coming into this week and into uh, the holiday weekend is I wanna get all the stuff to build the hot side. So the tubing, I wanna pull the headers off. I've got these old school Holly, um, I think they're equal length shorties that are for a box. So the goal for tonight, Monday night, is I'm just going to pull the headers off that are on the car right now and then see if I can get the uh, shorties on here and see what they look like. Very wide this deal here and there's not a lot of room over here to be very close So I think what I'll do is on, uh, I think eBay, Amazon, one of them, there's some cheap stainless box body type headers and they're a couple hundred bucks. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just order those, see what happens. Uh, these hookers that I have, not gonna fit. So that sucks. This is, uh, this is gonna snowball, I know it is. Anyhow, uh, I'm gonna get those deals ordered and I guess kind of on hold until then. All right, y'all, forgive my hair. I'm gonna wear a hat today. It's Friday, September 1st. We're going into Labor Day weekend. Uh, the last time I was on the camera, you could see that the headers I got didn't fit. Well, I took a chance and bought some Chinese shorty headers and I will show you if these things fit really well. Plenty of room. That's the uh, passenger side and then the driver side. Plenty of room, easy spark plug access. I like it. So the plan for today, uh, because we're going to Labor Day weekend, I've got four days off. We're gonna go down to a company called JMD Tubes and we're gonna grab some stainless pipe so that I can build the hot side this weekend. So I've never done um, stainless, but there's a first for everything. So I'm grabbing a few things that I need. I want to take down there and then uh, we're going to blaze down there, get what we need to get. And then we're going to come back. I'm going to go have a bottle of argon filled up so that I can back purge all this stuff when I start to actually do it. But uh, I'm going to take you along down there while we get that stuff. And then we will come back and get cranking on this bad boy. The goal for this weekend is to have the entire hot side built. Um, we may have to take a run out to Kelly's. He's got an intercooler, an air-to-air -air intercooler. Uh, it may fit. Uh, one of the things I do not like with Turbo LX cars is they cut the bottom fins out of the bumper, and it, to me, looks like complete crap. So 
if that doesn't work, that uh, air to air, then I'm gonna do an air to water, like a Mishimoto air to water, and something that I can hide behind my bumper. I don't like that uh, sticking out a little bit in the bottom is okay, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't like when they cut all that stuff out. I think it looks like crap. So anyways, uh, let's, get, let's get our butts down to JMD tubes and get some material. Sometimes they patent the V-band clamp that'll work on their turbo. So that's something I need to figure out before I buy the V-band for the for the downpipe. But I have all the material that I can build the hot side all the way to the turbo. The turbo flange has, I think, just been delivered right now. So we're on our way back home. And I think I'm going to pick up some one-inch chromoly tube. That way I can make a... Uh, maybe like a bracket off of the engine over to the turbo flange so that this thing's not just hanging there on its own and gonna end up cracking the freaking uh, turbo piping. So I'll figure out a way to do that. I got something in my mind that I was thinking about last night, but we'll see if that'll work or not. So anyhow, we'll catch up back with you when we're home. All right, folks, it's uh, Saturday, September the 2nd, I think. And so I went down yesterday, as you've seen, and we got all the stuff from JMD Tubes. Some of this stuff I already have. Some of this stuff. But I got V-band clamps from them, stainless uh, pipe. This I got from the welding store. Some pie cuts. And then the turbo flange is uh, Parker Speed. Uh, nice stuff. So two and a half into T4. And I also bought this spark plug deal he makes for getting uh, your socket on your spark plugs in tight places. Figured I would buy it just to have it. I can actually get to the plugs on my Mustang very easy. So Parker Speed makes good stuff. But uh, I'm just gonna start cranking on this deal. See how far I can get. Hopefully with all this all this stuff I can do what I need to do I am the best fabricator as you guys have seen and then I'm just gonna take this I was talking with uh, Kelly black GT and I'm just gonna weld, weld this right to this ball and then I think I'm gonna take this flange off and try and cut that off so first things first I guess I will try and get that flange off and then we'll start thinking about where we're gonna put that on Set up and so this is what we're gonna do here and I think that'll be perfect 
I don't know if you can see in there, but I'll be able to just put some tacks in there and then lay a bead around there. All right, got these things all cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna make a trip to the Home Depot and Harbor Freight. My little angle grinder from Harbor Freight broke, so I need to go get a new one. I wanna clean the inside of the tube before I try and weld the V-bands on this deal, but I'll show you what we got. So that's what we got. These will go on actually pretty nicely. So I'm gonna go get what I need and I'll be back. It's about 5.30, there's a bunch I did that you guys missed. I had Tim over here and we just started doing stuff. <clears throat> but uh, let me show you where we're at. So I got the V-bands tacked, both sides of the headers. And now I've made a big gaping hole in the frame. I'm gonna weld this piece of metal in and then I'm gonna have to plate this side just so there's a little bit of strength but I've taken so much out because of where the pipes are going up and the turbo is going to sit up here so I'm going to get that all welded in and then uh, I'll lower the car down and I'll show you what I've got going we kind of figured out where we want the uh, turbo flange to go so I'm going to make a bracket get the turbo flange where I want it tacked to the little frame up there so it doesn't move and then I'm gonna start building towards the turbo flange. I thought I had a lot of real estate in here and then we put the radiator back in and man, it is gonna be, it's gonna be freaking tight. All right, it's about like, 10:30, man this is definitely not my forte at all this is my first time building a turbo hot side if that's that's what it's called that's what they call it yeah i'll show you what what it looks like so that's going through the frame and then it comes down it goes in here i was trying to tack over here. I was just having problems just blowing holes. So I'm gonna have to spend an extra time on the bench trying to clean that up. But I have one pipe and then I can get the wastegate here. And then the next one needs to come along the bottom. And But I am gonna try and tackle that one tomorrow. I'm be uh, crawling underneath the car with the freaking welding helmet on and you're knocking your head on stuff and I'm over here getting my you know what kick so uh, I'm gonna call it a night and I'll check you guys in a.m. all right Sunday morning I don't know the third or something like that I already started cranking on the driver's side without even filming kind of have an idea but I need to start uh, tacking stuff because I keep dropping the pieces and I'm denting them so let me show you I'm gonna go ahead and tack get this one tacked in because I can move the V-band wherever I want and I'm trying to kind of come up and stay high and then come here and then go up and the reason is is because like I said that other exhaust pipe's gonna have to come through here and might have to go underneath and then up or something I don't know but I'm gonna get to tacking stuff and I'll just put you on the camera <laughs> I kind of struggle underneath here. 
Um, but I'm gonna change it to where all I gotta do is touch the, there's a little trigger on the torch. I'm gonna try that instead. Um, I just really struggle with getting everything under here, your feet, this, that, and the other, and uh, not my thing, but this is kind of boring to watch, but I'm gonna add that other little piece and start working my way that way. Probably just put you on a time lapse, sorry, but this stuff's boring to sit here and watch and listen to the dogs bark and all that. Plus, I wanna listen to the radio. <laughs> I've successfully landed all the pipes where they need to be but I just had an epiphany and I've got a I'm gonna have to pull the passenger side pipe out so that I can weld uh, where I won't be able to get to so I'm gonna have to cut the freaking tack welds that I just got but I've got the basic concept here I'll have to cut the two tack welds pull this thing off weld it on the, the table and then at least that one section Maybe I'll mark it and then I'll um, get it back up in here. But that's what we're working with. I was trying to stay away from the radiator hose right there. And then, yeah, all that back in there is going to have to be welded because I ain't going to be able to get to it. So I'm going to have to cut these two tack welds off. But I'm going to do that and then uh, I'll pull this thing on the table and at least weld that one section. And that's what it looks like from the top. All right, you guys, it's Monday, Labor Day, and I didn't film anything last night after the last clip that you saw. I just started working, and I was building a, trying to build a bracket to kind of hold this turbo. A little different than maybe what anybody else has seen, but um, it just started kicking my butt. So I didn't even film, I just started working. But I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what I got. And then I think I need to weld this entire thing up and when I'm done doing that, then I can knock the holes in it for the wastegates. Uh, waiting for my friend Kelly to let me know if that's what I should or shouldn't do. Um, but if that's the case, if that's what I should do, then I'm just going to be sitting on a bench welding for the rest of the day, probably. So this is the bracket. I try to use the AC stuff. I mean, the turbo's not bolted down. It seems stout, but, you know, when things heat up and all that then it might I don't know but that should at least uh, hold it try and hold some of the turbo up it would be nice if I was good enough to like maybe like bend and do one of those turbo mounts too but I just ain't that good Busted that bad boy out. This is what it looks like on the bench. So, this long process of burning this thing together is gonna start now. That's gonna be fun to fill in. Yikes. All right, I'm ready to get going. I've got argon going in the pipe. Kinda had to rig something up. I just used my MIG welder deal because I don't have the other fancy stuff, but I've got argon going in this side. And uh, I'm just gonna start doing little itty bitties all the way around and put you on time lapse.
9.15 on Monday night. And this thing's finally welded out. It's certainly not my best work, but I can tell you that these tubes are all stuck together for sure. Put the camera around and show you this nasty, nasty thing. So some of the areas I had trouble with like the back purging or wind blowing out my other stuff. I have my nicest bead right there. But they, it's all together. I even got in there. Hard to see. Anyhow. Uh, now I'm gonna see how much it moved. I'm gonna try and put it on the car real quick. I've gotta work tomorrow, so. I'm gonna try and put it on the car. And now I'm going to bed. So. I'll set you up on the stand and we'll see how much this damn thing moved. All right, this thing's actually easier to put on. <laughs> I know it's on the lift, but it's actually easier to put on if you crawl underneath it. So, What a disaster. Well, thank God I have the one flex in there because uh, when I put the flex on and then tried to do the driver's side, it wasn't lining up. So the driver's side is kind of, there's no flex in it. You've got to put that side on first, <coughs> excuse me, then the flex side. It did go back on, uh, it did move. We are now touching the frame, so I'm gonna have to figure something out over here. We are touching right there. I'm gonna have to figure something out. But everything else looks good. It still looks level on this side and all that. And I don't think I'll be taking this thing on and off. I hope I won't be, so. It's a pain in the butt to get on once. No big deal, but let me let this thing down. And... Ah, long day. I'm tired of welding. It is landed. The hot side is welded up other than the blowout valves. I'm gonna save that for the next video. I'll get the wastegates all done and all that. But uh, until next time, I'll see you on the next one.